Hey, what's up everybody? In this video tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at how we can bring our snail cam in and uh, get this fully constrained so it actually, you know, actually cooperates and actually works like it's supposed to. Um, I'm assuming at this point you have probably already used my video tutorials where I show you how to create the box and bring a lot of the mechanisms in. The only thing that's really absent here are going to be the cams. All right, so in this case, we're going to go in and we're going to show you how to work and use the snail cam. All right, so the first thing I'm going to have you do is in our previous video tutorials, I actually had you bring in the follower and the follower rod, and I had you actually apply a, a slider joint to it. We're actually going to go in there and we're going to rip those out, and we're going to sort of pop those back in because I want there to be a particular reference point to use. So the rest of the numbers you're about ready to see are actually going to work. All right, so all we have to do is find the slider joint over here in uh, the browser. Now, if you can't find those joints, just know you have a joints folder. If you expand out on it, you're going to see all the joints that are currently in our design. So I'm going to come down here, right click on our first slider joint. I'm going to delete that. Go into our second slider joint. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Okay, so now what we're going to be able to do is to grab our actual followers. We can pull those out. Okay, now we can see them. All right, so before we start applying our slider joints again, what I want us to do is, is coming over here in your components, and I want you to find your two followers. We're just going to come in here and, and just turn those off just by simply hitting on the eyeball. Okay, the visibility has been shut down. So now I'm going to flip this over and look at the bottom of our follower rod. I'm going to come up here to joint, zoom right on here to the bottom of the follower rod, find the dead center. I'm going to go ahead and pick that joint origin. Now I'm going to flip this over, come here to this side um, over here, and I'm going to attach that to that joint origin right there. Now when this comes in, we can see that the motion that it was doing for us, which was none, okay, is basically indicating to us all right, that we need to flip this over to slider. And we can now see that slider is working. That's in good shape, so I'm going to go ahead and say OK. All right, so now that, that is done, I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. Okay, I'm going to come up here, go to joint, come here to the base, find the dead center for that joint origin, flip it over, and I'm going to find the dead center of our actual rod guide, bring that in. It's still going to remember slider from last time, so we can see that that's good. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK. All right, so now what I want to do is, is actually bring in my snail cam. All right, so I'm going to come out, find my snail cam, drop that into our design, grab it by the grip, pull it up, and now here's what we have to do. All right, so there's a little bit of thinking that you have to do on this. So this is really set up for a right-handed person, which means the crank handle would probably be most comfortable if you're cranking it in this orientation right here or this direction. All right, so it's going to be clockwise. So what that means is, if you haven't figured this out yet, snail cams only work in one direction. So what I want the tail to do is point towards the front of the box. What I mean by that is I would be taking this dial okay, and turning this 90 degrees. All right, so when we crank it, we can only crank in one direction, and that's going to be clockwise. All right, so I can see my orientation is correct, so I'm going to go ahead and just pick on OK. All right, so to get this in the orientation that we want, we're going to have to come down here, go to joint, I'm going to be picking the top of the hole to find that dead center. And then coming down here and finding the dead center of our actual axle. So that comes in. We can obviously see that's not the correct motion that we're wanting. So I'm going to pick on motion and switch this over to rigid. All right, so those are connected correctly. But the problem is the position is not correct. So I'm going to go into the front view on our view cube. I'm going to grab the arrow and I'm going to pull this over and try to get it close to dead center. All right, it looks like we can go over a little bit more. So right now it's sitting at negative 1.5. So I'm going to say 1.55. We can see it's probably over a little bit too far. So I'm going to bring this back and say I want this to be negative 1.525. Looks like it's directly underneath the follower. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just say OK on that. All right, so taking a look at things here, we can see our pair cam is in there. It's attached to our axle. So now what we have to do is we have to bring our follower down, okay? And uh, we're going to be bringing that right down there on top of the actual cam. All right, so there's going to be a little bit of information that we're going to need to know for this. 
So if we go out into the Google Drive, go into Automata Resources, and go into our Automata Assembly Information Drawings, okay, we can see that there's a drawing here for Automata uh, Hexagon and Snail Cam. If I pick on this one and scroll down, you're going to be seeing the information that we need. All right, one piece of information, it looks like I left it off here, is that the distance from the top of the box to the dead center is going to be a distance of 2.25. I'll have to go and repair that. All right, so you're going to have to know how far those are. The second piece of information that we need to understand, <clears throat> all right, is going to be uh, the relationship of the follower rod and the follower itself. All right, so we can see that the follower rod is going into a square hole because we know that the follower rod is square. All right, so the square hole is going to be uh, 0.25 by 0.25, and it's going to be cut down into this plastic material at distance of 0.25. Over here on the right side, we can see we have this flat edge right here that's going to go down a distance of 0.25. Then it goes into an arc, comes and it sweeps around. So the arc has a radius of 0.25. Why am I telling you this? Because we need to know what the overall distance is here. All right, a little bit of math says that that distance is 0.375. All right, so now that we know that, that is 0.375 from the top to the very bottom of the follower, all right, we need to know what the distance is from here to here. All right, and so if we come out here and do the math, we can see that this is 0.375 subtract. 0.25 from it, which means that's going to equal a distance of 0.125. So where the little red line is being shown right there, that distance is 0.125. Okay, so now that we have that information, the last piece of information that we need to know is, is the lowest spot on the pair cam is going to be up from the center a distance of 0.375. The highest point on the pair cam, all right, from the actual center point is going to be a distance of 0.75. All right, so that's all very valuable information that we're about ready to apply. Okay, so now that we know that information, we're gonna be switching back over to Fusion. And what we need to do is, is come in here and find our correct slider joint, because we have two. All right, so I'm gonna be looking for this slider joint, okay, that has a darker bluish color on it, okay, when I'm just simply hovering over the slider. So I can see the slider on the right is a darker blue color, in my case that's slider 40, I would right click on slider 40 and come in and pick on edit joint. So what I want to do is using the arrow, I'm going to pull the follower rod in the direction I want this to go. All right, so I can see in my case, this is a negative direction. So I'm going to say, I want this to go negative 2.25. The reason is, is that from the top of the box, which is where our slider joint you know, originates, down to the dead center of the axle, that is a distance of 2.25. And since that was showing negative, I just put in negative 2.25. Now the thing that we have to fix here is, is now we have to start accommodating for our follower and we have to actually uh, <clears throat> accommodate for the very um, high point on our pair, our pair cam. So I'm going to add in my 0.125, okay? And then what I'm also gonna be adding in all right, is going to be uh, the high point on our snail cam. I think I said pair earlier, sorry, snail cam. All right, so if we take a look here, all right, we can see that the high point on our snail cam is gonna be a distance of 0.75. All right, so back in the fusion, I'm going to now add 0.75 to this, all right, and that's gonna be bringing that follower, up, follower rod up into location, and I'm gonna go ahead and just say okay. All right. Oh, one thing I think I left off was I never turned my followers back on. Oops. All right. So in case you need to turn them back on, all right, go ahead and turn on by the eye. All right. So we can see that that follower uh, is right there on top of our snail cam. All right. So you don't have to do this. I'm going to do this is I'm going to come out and I'm going to come in here to the side on my automata box. I'm going to turn the visibility off. I'm going to look at this from the right side with our view cube. And we can see that that follower is resting right on top okay, of our actual snail cam. All right, so I'm going to bring this back into home view, come back in, turn on my side. All right, and now we are ready to make some things happen. So I'm going to look here at the front view. All right, and now I have to start figuring out a little bit of math here. All right, so the first thing is, is that 
we have to determine what our rest is. Right now, it's at the very peak of our cam, but at some point, all right, it's gonna have to go all the way down to the bottom. So we need to find the difference between our peak, our maximum, and our minimum distances from the uh, dead center of the snail cam. So if we take a look at our drawing, we can see our max is 0.75, our minimum is 0.375, okay? So we're gonna have to go out there and um, you know, line this up for uh, our rest, okay? So our rest in our case, okay, would be negative uh, 0.375. So jumping back in here into Fusion, I would come over here to my slider. I would right click, okay, come down, pick on, um, not that, pick on edit joint limits. I'm gonna say I want my rest in my case to be negative 0.375. Okay, and you can see how the follower rod is moving down into that low point. Okay, and then the maximum that this would be would be a positive 0.375. Okay, just like so. All right, so we're just splitting the difference there. All right, once we have those done, we're going to go ahead and say OK. All right, and the last thing we need to do is come up here, go to Assemble, and we're going to enable all contact. So surfaces are going to be able to detect surfaces and contacts. All right, and this thing should now work the way that we want. All right, so just orbiting this over just a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and grab the crank handle, okay, and we're not going to be, there we go, we're going to be cranking this guy just like this, okay, going clockwise. And you're going to see that that snail cam, all right, is going to be able to work. All right, so yes, I know this is a computer. In real life, okay, if we went the other direction with it, it would not be able to go in that direction. It would lock up. Okay, but in this case, it's a computer. All right, it's actually allowing it to work. All right, so last thing we need to do is, is come up here, go to Revolut. We can right click on this. Okay, and now we can come back and go to our home position. All right, and that's now going to set it back to where we started. All right, so there you go. That is how you bring a snail cam in. You place that in. Okay, you can adjust. Uh, you know, the distance of the follower and the follower rod by using edit joint and then go in there doing a little bit of math, knowing the measurements that you do, you can edit the joint limits. Okay, so once again, just <clears throat> make sure you're watching this because um, all these numbers are really based off the orientation of the cam. So in our case, uh, the peak of the cam was going straight up. If you want to go straight down, you're going to have to do the calculations on that. So there you go. That's how you constrain a snail cam okay, into automata.